All right, hi guys. I'm just going to show you how I actually use the slow motion or the HFR function on the Sony RX10 Mark IV. Uh, this will be exactly the same for the RX100 uh, Mark V and VI, I believe. Um, but basically, we've got the your back screen here. The camera at the moment is in HFR mode, so it's just turned itself off, literally. Anyway. So, if we go into function, HFR settings, so I've actually got it in my, in my uh, quick function menu, there's 250, 500 and 1000 frames per second. I generally shoot a 500, seems to be the best quality and the most usable. 1000, you've got to be very, very careful, there's got to be a lot of light. So, basically what I'm going to do is throw a load of coins in front of the camera. And uh, we'll see what happens. First thing I'll do is turn the ISO up. Let's make it bright enough to actually make it usable. We'll set a 1 500th of a second, f2.4, but I can, being in manual, actually shut it down. So I'm actually going to have to increase, there we go, so about f8. I'm going to increase the ISO a bit more to 3200. I've got it in manual focus already. And um, basically, if I go into the menu button and we go to HFR, which would be, I think, it's in number two, Ooh, get out of there. HFR settings in there. You've got different setups here. So I have it at 50p at the top. There you go, 50p. Frame rate is set at 500 frames per second, which we can do in the um, quick function menu. Uh, HFR priority setting is quality. You can have shoot time, so it will drop the quality to give you more shoot time, basically. But I leave it at quality priority. And your record time, right? This is where people get a bit confused. So, your start trigger. If. Imagine now, I'm going to go and throw. I'm going to throw these coins I've got in my hand in front of the camera. I've got to push the record button and throw the coins at the same time. With because obviously you've only got a few seconds worth of recording um, on the buffer, so you're going to more likely miss what you're actually going to see um, in your slow motion. So I shoot generally end trigger half. That's giving me half the the looping speed. So it actually basically records to the card faster because you're only using half of your buffer. If um, you leave it at start trigger, it'll do the whole thing. So I think it's about seven seconds worth of buffer. So I use it on end trigger half, which means if we go into that, so let's come out there. Um, basically now we're in here, we focused on our object. I've pre-focused on my hand um, in shot. I then push the middle button on the on the wheel there, and now it's saying start record with movie button. So basically now it's looping. So even though there's nothing happening in front of the camera, it's actually recording, but only into its RAM. So it's just constantly looping. So basically now, if I put some things in front of there, push record, you'll then see what's just happened. So it's given me enough time to actually, you know, do what I need to do, and then you push record. So basically what happens is it's looping. As soon as the, the moment has happened, you quickly push the movie button, and then it records. So it's, uh, I mean, this I think is three and a half seconds. Something like that. So if I do that again, so we're pre, pre done. And then what we do is coins, push record, and you can see the coins are falling down. There we go. Easy peasy. And that is probably the best way of using the slow motion function on the camera. Works really well. I, I love how it works. Um, I mean, if something's happening in front of you and you've got it on the start trigger, wham. It, it's, it's fine. You've, you've got it and off it goes. But I generally just have it in half. It generally seems to be enough time. Um, otherwise, it takes a long time to record to the, the card um, from its buffer. Um, like I say, it's probably around about 20 seconds or so to do a half trigger. But that, that is, I think, three and a half seconds is four, uh, so three and a half seconds times by 40, uh, which is, um, I think, 
um, especially at a thousand frames a second. So that's how long amount of time you'll actually have to look through um, as a slow motion uh, video. So it's it's cool. It's a really really cool bit of, bit of tool in, in built in the camera. And I wish it was on the A7R3. It would have been an amazing thing to have. Um, but it's so usable on the um, RX10 Mark IV because at the end of the day you've got 20 to 4 600 millimeters worth of slow motion kit. Uh, you've only got a thousand frames a second, but it, it's still cool. I mean, you can slow helicopters, rotor blades down in flight, which is really cool. You can slow birds hovering. Um, there's lots of things you do. Water, uh, cars going through water, splashing water up, fire, explosions. Um, the most important thing about things like explosions, so fireworks or bangers and things like that, or if you're, you know, a pyrotechnic, you're blowing up something. Um, the fact we can actually adjust. So if I come out of there now, we can actually adjust the aperture. And you can see it get a lot brighter. So I can have, you know, you can, I can set my depth I want, my ISO, and also my shutter speed. So it's minimum is only one five hundredth, one five hundredth of a second. So during one second is five hundred frames. But I can actually go right up to twelve thousand eight hundred if I want. So depending on how bright it's going to be. But that means what it, if you've got an explosion happening? If you have it in normal mode where it's not in manual, um, so if I go into there and go over here, I've got the, the manual um, set up here. So if I click in there, I can actually have it back in um, shutter priority, aperture priority, or P. Um, up there you go. And the camera will do everything for you. But I leave it in manual. It means I can adjust everything to my tastes. But also, if you've got an explosion, so if you have it in P, and you pre-focus your shot and everything like that, and nothing's happened yet. Um, the camera's going to take the light reading from what there is, what there is now. But once you get a massive explosion, it's going to be a lot more light and a lot more, you know, brightness to deal with. So if you pre preempt that as such, maybe double your maybe double your um, shutter speed, for example. Um, when the explosion goes off, a lot of light comes. It means that you're not going to overexpose the uh, the video itself so there's a lot to play with there it's made it so much more usable I didn't know until I randomly discovered it by pushing that button um, that you could change it to manual um, and just use it as you wish so that's really really good so anyway there's some um, there's some bits I've taken today um, some dragonflies and things so uh, have a watch and you'll see see what's possible okay so with this shot here I still had it on the half end sort of uh, setting so it's looping same as this one both 500 frames per second I could have zoomed in a bit actually on the bus but at the time I didn't realize how big he was going to become sort of into the shot this one here is from the air show and uh, it's an Augusta I think he's flying past and uh, it's easy enough to just lock on these pigeons today having a little bit of a mating ritual and uh, well doing what pigeons do just <laughs> they're just a bit random it's quite funny one gets smacked in the head and they don't even know what they're doing I don't think it's quite funny though but you can see the feathers flying everywhere but uh, that's at 500 frames per second basically I've just got it looping and then when I see something interesting happen you just then push the record button just after it's sort of occurred and then you don't really miss much um, if it doesn't turn out to be too good you can click the button again it does cancel and then it just goes back to being ready so it just carries on looping as, as it was um, as I say I very rarely use the sort of start button as such so it does you know instant sort of record but I just leave it looping and I just pick my, pick my moment the only difference is um, if you have it on start and it basically just starts recording instantly compared to with the loop you need a second or two just to get it get it looping so this shot here was uh, 500 frames a second it was a ball which is kind of cool so the explosion explosion of uh, stones as it lands I messed up the focusing very very slightly there but actually as it came into shot a bit more it became sort of a bit more sharp which is good a bit of luck there but as you can see the dust there's no way I could see that dust in real in real life it just didn't you couldn't see it but because it's so slow you can actually pick it out there you go, so the stones are out of focus and as they come towards the camera they become nice and sharp, so works really really well I shot that at f5.6 um, at 600mm, so I was well away from the actual balls 
you can't do stuff like that on a mobile phone even though the mobile phones do have up to a thousand frames per second they're a bit limited and uh, obviously you have no no manual control there you go another one there that works really well so it looks like I'm much closer than I am I was actually about 10 to 12 feet away maybe a bit more so it worked really really well so I do love the slow motion feature it's one of the main things I use quite a bit so Dragonfly I couldn't actually get around to the other side of the pond without him flying away so just him taking off but you can see how their wings are. I've never saw their wings work individually it's amazing so they managed to get around a little bit further because he kept coming back with a Dragonfly you, you, you need to spend some time in their sort of in their place where they live where they where they hunt or whatever um, because they have a routine and if you stand there for about 10, 10 minutes or so they will always come back to a certain area just to rest and it seemed to be this wall uh, right we had a drink and uh, I had a glass of orange juice and it was basically the wasps got attracted to it so there's wasps flying around I obviously like the smell of the orange juice that's at uh, 500 frames per second again which uh, worked ok the light was terrible uh, there was no, no sunshine now so that's a big key light is a huge key um, part of slow motion video you need lots of it so don't bother trying to shoot indoors really um, unless you've got a lot of lighting if it's LED lighting it must be flicker free because otherwise it'll show up so I use my road light EOS quite a bit and that's, that's fine but a lot of um, cheaper lights or LED torches you'll see a pulse which is the uh, sort of refresh rate here's just um, there was a fountain so it was just some water droplets splashing in into the water another 500 frames per second and that is um, the same waterfall or sorry waterfall, a fountain sorry um, from about I'd say 300 400 feet away at 600 mil you can see the guy walking there on the left as you can see the resolution is not all that amazing but here is a wide angle 24 millimeter shot close up so you've got a lot of scope there you've got a lot of scope there which um, you know is a completely different situation compared to a mobile phone that obviously can do this you know it's not so bad but the quality still isn't there isn't there um, but you know it works really well and having it manual I could actually adjust the exposure for the sky a bit and also the, the foreground as well I could sort of balance it in between so it worked really really quite well it just allows you to see things that you can't really see with the naked eye that, well, that water there it looks like a, just a running just running water There's no, you can't see the droplets but suddenly the droplets become apparent when it's being shot at such a high frame rate this one here is a thousand frames per second so this is how key bright light is so good bright light I shot this in auto so before I'd realised you could actually shoot in full manual I would have done it completely differently if I'd known but this I was just lucky with this he went straight down and came back up so he was still in my focus area um, I had enough light there that I could have shot f8 or something like that to make sure I got him in focus properly but you know I'm still very very happy with this so you know that's about three seconds of footage um, and I've actually cropped half of it out so that's three seconds is now 30 seconds here's a friend riding horse it was just the way the um, the dust blew up in the the sun rays work so so well really really cool that's at 500 frames per second as well so the horse is doing around about 20 miles an hour I'd say it's one of my favourite bits I've done so far work really really nicely and these are all handheld I've not got the camera on a tripod because the frame rate is so high you can see a little bit of movement sometimes but very rarely um, down at Berlin Gap when the sea was rather lovely and blue um, just a little bit of slow motion uh, waves come in which is kind of cool um, this is just on loop again I've literally just clicked the middle button it starts looping as soon as you know, I'm happy with what I've seen click the record button and then it starts recording to the card that worked really nicely War and Peace show. I messed this up really, really gutted with this, but it's still cool. I wish I'd 
gone slightly wider and moved left. But you just didn't know, realise how far it was going to come out of the front of the tank. Really, really cool. But if I would, if I'd known I could have shot in uh, manual, I would have actually stopped it down quite a bit, so the explosion would have been so bright. Car driving past in heavy rain. That's quite cool. Um, but then again, the light was pretty terrible. So you've kind of you've got to balance your settings to get the kind of shot you want versus the kind of shot you can actually do. So you know your settings may not actually allow that. So this is a helicopter landing at Headcorn, but unfortunately there was parachutists falling out of the sky and they have to sit back out of the way um, until the parachutes have landed, otherwise people might get hurt, or worse. Um, and they'd cut the grass, so obviously he's flying over the, the cut grass, it was so dry that all the bits are being blown up. Um, shot at 500 frames a second, he was about two to 300 feet away. And then the last one, uh, it was a combine harvester offloading his uh, grain into the back of a, uh, a tractor there. And he's moving at what, 10 miles an hour? Looks like he's hardly moving at all. But uh, that worked really well. So, guys, that's kind of just a, a kind of an example of what you can do with it. Um, obviously, a lot, lot more. Um, you can set up stuff and go crazy if you really want to, but that's just a quick, quick look at it. Um, if you like that, please comment below or ask any questions, I'll try and help. Um, and also, please subscribe, please click the notification bell, and I shall see you soon.